I'm your host, Bradley Martin, and this is Clearing the Way, a resource for small business owners. A couple quick notes uh, about the first two or three episodes, um, maybe four. Uh, you're going to notice some echo in the first couple. It gets better. Um, after that first one, really, we I, I've made some adjustments. The echo is definitely gone after that first one or, or better after the first one. Um, and then there's some some camera troubles or uh, just some issues in the first couple. Uh, first one, you're going to notice some fantastic uh, autofocus box on mic. Uh, and then the second episode, there's also a little bit of an autofocus issue, but uh, I think I got that squared away after that. So um, after episode four, I believe, uh, or the fourth guest episode, all of that should be squared away. And I'm going to continue to make some uh, adjustments so that this uh, this all gets better. Hello, humans. I am your host, Bradley Martin. Uh, my goal here is to uncover the obstacles uh, that other small business owners have faced, so that you can better be prepared, be better prepared uh, when you experience similar challenges. Today, my first guest on the show is Mike Scobovius, the conductor of creativity at Scubo Creative. Uh, Mike graduated from PTI in 2008, went on to gather 10 years of experience in graphic design. He began working uh, at Scubo Creative full-time in May of 2019, and they focus on branding, print design, web design, video production, marketing, and a bunch of other things. Mike, Thank you for being the first guest on the show. Well, no, thank you. Um, let's. Uh, this is this is exciting. So we'll um, let's work through. Uh, is there anything else to add? Actually, anything that I missed there? Uh, no, but just uh, you got it pretty well covered. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm celebrating my third year in business, um, and uh, we serve as a one stop shop for small businesses and nonprofits. We help build and tell their story. But other than that, we're good. Thank you. Nice. Um, okay, so. Uh, let's, let's kind of start, um, my, my, the, the way this kind of work, let's kind of work through how you got to this point to, to start Scubo Creative, um, how you got here. So as a, let's start back in like grade school even. So, um, what kind of student were you? Did you play any sports, anything that kind of, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how, how everybody has gotten to this point. So I would definitely looking back consider myself a mediocre student, um, and a dabbler, like, you know, half interested doing some things. Like I wrestled for a little bit, um, you know, had a, a little bit of a team environment, um, at very small school in rural Ohio. Uh, you know, I think my graduating class was like 125, 130. Where, where at in Ohio? So it was Harrison central high school, Caddis, Ohio. Yeah, where, so where's that? the closest thing is probably, so, so from Pittsburgh, if you go out 2230 for about 35, 40 minutes, you'll run into Caddis, Ohio, birthplace of Clark Gable, and uh, I was a Harrison Central Husky. <laughs> okay, so you wrestled, um, you wrestled there. What kind, so, okay, that's interesting. Any, any other, uh, any other activities or anything? Uh, so I was heavily involved with, um, you know, my grandfather was the the commander of the local legion post. So there was a lot of you know volunteer work. Uh, we actually ripped out a um, a railroad and put in like a recreational bike trail. Uh, so I got to help with a few of those projects, like building a trolley, building a covered bridge, um, just huh. odd, odds and ends. So you can kind of see where the the background is kind of forming with like the whole community involvement thing. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. So, huh. That's, I mean, that's, that's interesting. Um, definitely way different than like the things that I was involved in, but, um, yeah, as far as like traditional, like as far, like there was, I was, I was part of one club and it's a key component of this whole story. And that was business professionals of, of America. I had like the stereotypical, 60 year old teacher for typing class a space b space <laughs> and the way that B uh, business Pro professionals of america was set up at the time is you had to pick two different disciplines and do a competition so one of them was word processing i literally just closed my eyes and that one so word, <laughs> word processing i think to say it did not go very well uh, but the other one was um it was, 
It was actually a graphic design. It was, I had to come up with a logo and a promotional poster for, um, for their uh, national event that happened in New York. Um, so <laughs> it was literally like the first time I ever like did a logo myself. Um, and it was in Photoshop. Yes, you, can, you the professionals can hate me later. Uh, so um, I took a couple of pictures of my, <laughs> of my classmates, got an apple, Photoshopped them into incorporate like this like little composite thing. Um, you know, looking back as a professional, like 13, 14, 15 years later, uh, straight garbage. But <laughs> what, so what what age or what grade was that? So that was my senior year. So I was okay. probably like. 17, 17, 18 ish. Um, and did you, you chose that one? I did. Yes. So what led you, did you think that you were going to enjoy that or what? I did. Yes. Cause I dabbled around in Photoshop, um, you know, four years in, you know, art class, you know, it, it, it made sense. Um, so coming up with a logo, coming up with a, a, a promotional tagline and a poster or whatnot. Um, I think, Yes, yeah, so my tagline, it had to be, I had a syllable count, which was really hard. Um, so I originally wanted big futures in the Big Apple, but the syllable count would not allow me. So it was just like big futures, semicolon, Big Apple. Uh, okay. So that was my first taste. And then lo and behold, like I ended up going, placing in the top 10 at state. So I... I, I won regionals, went to the state level, got into the top 10, because at, at that point you're either top three or top 10. So I don't know where I fell. Um, I like to tell people that I'm fourth, but there's, there's absolutely no proof. <laughs> um, so um, it, it just kind of dawned on me. It's like, okay, well, if, if I just can do this naturally, you know, let's actually learn how to do this. So that's what led to going to PTI, because um, I actually remember walking in and I, I told them, it's like, so there's two different paths I, I'm considering. One is like the graphics, like in the, in the visual communications. And the other one is marketing. Because one of the other things that I did in high school that I didn't touch on was I was an expert candy bar salesman. Can, <laughs> okay, can, okay. Candles, gift wrap, whatever it was, I was, I was typically a top earner. Um, and, and was that just something like, like naturally that came to you or like? Did, did yeah. somebody kind of coach you through that or what, how was, did that, as far as I, as far as I can remember, like it was just literally me going down with the Sarah's candies and beating down everyone's door. And <laughs> so did you have like, did you have a method that like, uh, like what was your go-to? How, how did you, how were you closing those sales? Oh boy, you're just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you don't I, remember, yeah, that's yeah. fine, but no, it's, it's so, I'd have to say. It was, hey, do you want this? No? Okay. Well, do you know anybody who can? Oh, well. And then it was like even one point, like I go down to like the local like flower shops or what, like the little mom and pop shops. Like, hey, do you want to sell You want to set up a stand? Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So you were I setting never, up I like. Never, I never had any takers, but it's like, that, that was like, you know, obviously looking back, it's like, that was actually a pretty good move on my part. Yeah. Yeah. Setting up trying to get like a little wholesale action there at the, at the stores. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, so that was, you know. I actually, I, that's how I paid for my prom ticket plus like I, cause you sell can you sell, uh, it was Yankee candles. And so I went through crushed my quota and then I started working on my best friend's quota. Oh. So, so it's like, cause I think if you sold like, it was, a, it was like either 15 or 20 or something like that. But anyway, if you, 15 Yankee candles, that's kind of a tall ask. Like, yeah. I, I don't even think Yankee candles sells 15 in a day. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, you paid for paid for your prom check. That's kind of it. That's kind of nice. Um, okay, so so you huh, okay, so you learned to sell. Um, you were selling everything very well. All the school fundraisers. Um, you happened to so okay. So you said you were dabbling in Photoshop before before mm-hmm. you realized that you or before you had taken the graphic design class. Um, what were you doing there? What was, so it was uh, super simple things like put a layer mask on this or, but were you into photography then or no, it was more like, uh, illustrations, composites, stuff okay. like that. Okay. Like, for fun, I used to take 
my friend's heads, Photoshop out the head. Okay. Blah, 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 okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, so that's, that's just, that was like where I got my start. Okay. And then, so then you went to PTI. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming graphic design. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Communications. Okay. Um, did you have any internships or anything while you were there or? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, my first internship was, uh, my, well, I say my only internship was with the KMA group. Uh, they're currently out of, at the time they were in South Point. Now they're in Carnegie. Um, and they do, uh, industrial design. Okay. Um, I will admit, like, I kind of felt a little out of place because even to this day, like, I just, I love doing logos. And you come into this, this industrial place or industrial design place. And it's like, here, do these name plays for like the console energy center. It's like, okay, I'll use, I'll use Illustrator and, you know, doing business or doing like building plans and layouts and all that fun stuff. And so it's like, okay. I mean, I got, I got what I needed out of it. I yeah. got, I got the, the work environment. Yeah. Well, and that like kind of corporate yeah. feel to it too. Um, huh. Okay. So then, so you graduated in 2008. Um, Just in time for the recession. Yeah. Perfect timing. Um, and then, so you went on to really, you were working for, uh, from what I could see, like several different, um, there were a few different graphic design jobs that you had, but you also, it, it seemed like it spanned several different industries, um, HVAC, print shop, mm-hmm. um, marketing agencies, trade show, like it covered all these things. Right. Uh, I like to think of it as, you know, de- again, calling back to that dabbler mentality, like absorb what I can from these places. And, you know, truthfully, like, you know, sometimes it just, it, it wasn't like a long-term situation. I mean, yeah. not to name names, but like those, those print houses, they really grind you down. It's like, Here's yeah. a business card you got to design in 15 minutes. Presses yeah. aren't running. We're not making money. It's like, all right. I mean, that's what I'm paid to do. I will do it. Yeah. But it's just like, it's just something that didn't. When you, um, when you took any of those jobs, did you think that they were going to be like, did you see yourself doing those long-term or did you? One of them I did um, only because they preloaded a, a growth plan for me. Like it was like, you come on and do this and then we'll get you in the management X, Y, and Z. Um, it didn't, it didn't come to fruition. Um, but because you weren't there long enough or because it, um, it just wasn't what they had kind of said that it was going to be. Yeah. The plans just kind of fell through. Okay. So okay. for one reason or the other, but I, but you know, I, I'm, it may sound like I'm kind of downtrodding my experience, but I say with all sincerity, like I would not be here in this position without them. So take that with uh, yeah. how you will. I mean, I feel like that's how most, you know, that's how, how it's how it kind of works. Um, okay. So you kind of dabbled around 2008, May, mm-hmm. no, sorry, 2019, not May. 2008, May. 2019, May, uh, which was, actually only a month before I started doing Didius full-time, um, which is very interesting. Um, so what led you, um, what led you to that? How, so you were freelancing before, um, you had done some, yeah. Yeah. Off and on, uh, since like, I think technically my paperwork is like Scubo Creative LLC was formed in like 12 or 13. But, oh, wow. But it's just okay. like, it's like, I, I didn't count it. It's yeah. Just like, yeah. I'll do like maybe like one job every like six months. Like yeah. little, little things. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, it got to the point where I I had absorbed a good, a, a good amount of knowledge and I was getting comfortable doing what I wanted to do. And, you know, truth be told, like my previous employer had different goals and objectives. Um, they were always after like the big ticket, like the blue chip clients. Yeah. Um, but you know, we were in Washington County, not very many blue chips to be had. Um, so I saw the need like, you know, servicing small businesses and nonprofits. Um, so it got to the, we ended up uh, parting ways and, um, the rest has been history. (laughs) Just so, so you started full time, uh, 2019. So from there, what were, um, I guess now we're into the, like the, the, the purpose of the show. Mm-hmm. So, um, first starting, 
is that's its own like there's a, there's the challenges that come with that so when you first were going full time like what came up what were some of the the things that stick out now um I mean, they can be as small as like do, not knowing how to track your finance, like any of those things that, that you ran into that are, they were hurdles, like they were challenges for you. What were, what were some of those first things that, that came up? Definitely the, the biggest thing is imposter syndrome that even to this day, like I still have the mental blocks and everything that comes with it. I mean, allowing myself to internalize some of the uh, feedback that I've been receiving over these last couple of years. It's like, that, that's a huge step. I mean, you know, people tell me that, Oh, you do such a great job or X, Y, and Z, this, that. And it's like, yeah, I, thank you. And, and I just say, thank you and move on. But like allowing that to actually like get in there and, you know, accept it, processing it, just, it's like a mental barrier. Yeah. That's, that's always, I mean, I don't know. I think it's, that's something that's so tough to get through. I think it kind of forces you to always be wanting like to get better and to do things better. And, um, that can sometimes be healthy, sometimes not. Um, you end up spending more time than you want on projects or not liking a lot of your work or obviously speaking from experience here. Um, these are, this is how I feel about these things, but, um, but it is, I mean, I, I haven't figured out how to get over it. I've gotten better with it, but, um, at this point, I think it's more of an acceptance. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. 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 You're yeah. going to be there. Yeah. I'm going to compensate for you, but you're, you're not going away. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably, uh, that's probably true. You just get better at managing it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So that is something you still are dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, how about like some of the things that that have come up when I've talked to I actually had a call with somebody um, like a week or two ago. Uh, they were thinking about starting freelancing and they had a bunch of questions. One of the biggest questions was clients. Like, did you have clients right away? Did you was that something that you had to kind of figure out how to get to how to get or how to like what how did what what did that look like for you? So in 2019 when I started out on my own. I had one ACE um, and it was a children's hospital south of here um, and maybe one or two other small, like very small clients. Um, and I thought like when the pandemic hit in March, like I was going to be done. It's like, oh my God, this was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Why, you were a, a less than a year in. Yeah. Less than a year in and, um, you know, I'll just say like, you know, we were very blessed. Um, one of the chat, like, so I may be skipping forward a little bit, but like one of the, one of the key things that I can convey to you and to the freelancer that is, you know, building your network, having, building those relationships, leveraging them and, you know, just building upon it is like the greatest asset. Like I mentioned, like I'm in three years of business Mm -hmm. and not once have I done any traditional advertising. Like I've never paid for an ad. I've never, you know, did any Facebook ads or Google ads. Um, and I just have my website and my networking groups. Really? (laughs) I mean, and even my, my website, I, if you actually go on there right now, like you'll see it hasn't been updated since like 2015. Uh, that's wild. It's like like, (laughs) that. That's funny. Um, yeah, the the guy who does websites who has a website that hasn't been updated, but that's Shoe like the, yep, yep, that's the the classic uh, <laughs> that's the classic story. Um, okay, so you you already had a, a decent, or you were able to to build that that network, um, so that helped helped with the the clients, which is that that I feel like is is the that's always a tough thing. Um, yeah, that's that's always a challenge. I feel like if you present yourself in a manner that you know, you're truly in their best interest, like uh, I was actually explaining this to another uh, gentleman earlier, and so we were talking about sales, and I said, you know, I, I don't really identify as a like a hard nosed sales or like commission oriented sales, like you know the hard sell. I'm more in you know feel I, I feel like the um, 
the term I came up with is like a matter of fact salesman. You need something? Well, as a matter of fact, I know somebody who does that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, um, I think my approach is very similar in that. Like I, that like very salesy, I just, I just hate sales in that way that like not a car salesman, but that is like the classic example of it. Um, where, yeah, that's a, that's one, like my approach is always like, here's what I do. <laughs> like it's either going to work for you or it's not. And if it's not, I'm not going to try to, right. I'm not going to convince you of it. Right. I don't want to convince you of it actually. Cause then we're starting this relationship on this weird, like this weird dynamic that Ultimate neither of us, is, yeah, like stuff. neither of us is super thrilled with. So, um, but when you're first starting out, like you may have some of those relationships. So that actually brings us, um, that's kind of an interesting uh, thing to, to discuss. When you were, obviously everybody ends up at some point dealing with like challenging clients, we'll say. Did you have any of those early on or any relationships that were, um, obviously don't go into like super specifics, but, um, or not at all if you don't want to, but Sorry. did you have any, did you have any like, tough situations with with clients as you i mean when you're first starting out especially dealing with an imposter syndrome like right so it can be tough to to manage some of those um more uh, not pushy that's not the right word but like they i don't know how to describe them actually but you like it's in a service-based industry um yeah did you have any anything anything like that so i know that definitely you know one client just like completely skipped my bill I did not. I, okay. That's tough. I never had to deal with any, I've never had any of that. I've, I've always had bills paid. So that, that is, um, that's a tough one. Yeah. And the, at the time, like it was very early on and you know, it, it was for a small, like it was a small amount. It was um, a, like a two week Google ad campaign, like nothing. It, it's not going to break the bank. It wasn't really worth fighting. He was a contractor out of the South Hills. Just like, All right, whatever, just yeah. have, have fun. Uh, but as far as having pains, like, let's say like, if you're rating like A, B, C, or D, like mm -hmm. having D clients, I've maybe only had maybe like two of them. Okay. And I think that their background just did not mesh with mine. Okay. Like, so like I said, like different goals, different methods, different aspirations, <laughs> Um, it just didn't. Now, do you think now that you've experienced those, do you think that you, can you identify those now or could you have identified those at the beginning of the re relationship or, um, or is that something that you kind of learn throughout your projects or your, your relationship with them? So my policy is that you need to show me through action. Like you can have a gut reaction to somebody. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, it, it could be right, it could be wrong. Like yeah, it, you really can't put a, you can't really put a metric to it until you actually see it. Um, that's like I'm dealing with some clients now that uh, you know may or may not, like somebody has a different impression, or you hear through the grapevine, it's like oh well, you know don't work with these people because X Y and Z, like I I'm, I'm gonna give you a fair shot. You know yeah, I mean? like, and a lot of those that I mean, especially when you're working with. Um, with small business, like everybody kind of know, and if you're focused on a town or two, like everybody starts to kind of interact with each other. So you have those, those personality clashes where if you just take all of those, it's like, well, then I'm not going to be able to work with anybody. Like everybody's got some weird issue with somebody. So you, uh, you, you kind of have to at least give them a shot. And then if, if in your meetings, it's like, well, I don't think we're just like, not, we just, we just don't mesh. Yeah. Um, you can graciously accept people's input and what they for what, sure what they, for sure because it's valuable. Know. Their experiences exactly. are valuable. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I can just be completely gullible. Who knows? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that that could also be true. Or you're just willing to give people a shot. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's a bad. I don't think that's a bad as long as you're not getting burned by it, and it seems like you're not. Like. You've only had I'm you had one person. I'm that statement. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay. All right. So we kind of worked through the clients, um, some of those potentially challenging things. Um, okay. So 
here's something I don't know if this doesn't really relate to like pain points. It might though. Um, so in your service line, so you've got a, a background in graphic design mm-hmm. and you've expanded to a ton of different things. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it. Like <laughs> you have actually, a ton of things. Yeah, 13 different service lines. And mm-hmm. I actually put it to paper because I'm uh, writing processes for each one. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. That's a lot. Um, so how did you like, what led you to expand to those? Um, was it due to client need? Was it due to you just kind of wanting to expand or how, how did you get to that point? So it's a fair mix between being opportunistic and clients just, just wanting it. Um, like for example, I can, you know, websites, they're kind of lower on the tier of things that I want to do, mm-hmm. but they're clearly the thing that is, that are being asked of in the market. Yeah. But like, like I said, like, I'd be doing logos all day if the market called for it. Yeah. But the partiality is it doesn't. So, you know, I, I do the websites. I do. They, I keep. I keep them updated. Uh, people are generally happy with them. Um, yeah. You know, I put out. I put out a quality product. Um, so it's just reading your clientele and anticipating their needs. Like, yeah. So if I do a website for somebody what's next? Like, are you going to do a video? Are we going to do some social media? Like what, what are we going to do? So, and you know, kind of segueing a little bit is like, I, I, I'm developing the sense that this kind of is what sets me apart from others in my field. It's like, I do like a trajectory marketing. Like we have, there'll be situations where, you know, somebody will say, Hey, I got $10,000 in seed money. So I need a logo. I need a website, social media presence, X, Y, Z. And you go to an agency and they say, okay, well, I'll be, you know, $7,000. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they produce good work. They hand it off. They, you know, get their website up and running, but the company goes up belly up in, in six months. Why? Because they didn't invest in their point of sales or they didn't invest in their inventory or yeah. the logistics. So what I do is I keep, it's like, here's where you are now. Here's what you need for like that first little bump. Mm-hmm. And then once we get there, we'll give it a little bit of time to percolate, show that, you know, this is, you know, moving in the right direction. And then we do the next big thing and then the next one after that. Yeah. So it's not like you'll get those. It might take you about six months to get from A to B yeah. instead of, you know, a month or whatever it is say for that initial campaign. But that gives you, it's more of a conservative approach that will hopefully, you know, give you sustainability and yeah that's that's kind of the same it's that like um it's just like approaching it in in different like tiers like here's what you need now let's do those like let's not spend all your money now you don't need all of these things right away like let's scale let's get to that point Um, especially when you're a small businesses and nonprofits you have to go through like especially as nonprofits they have to go through boards they have to go through budgets they have to go through yeah all sorts of red tape. Yeah. Well, and in those small businesses, like when at least uh, now when, when I'm referring to small, it's like those almost like micro, you know, where you're not dealing with like the, um, the standard view of small business, which is anybody under like 50 million or something like that. I think that's what technically qualifies as that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So it, it, I might be off slightly on the numbers there, but it's, it, it's, not what we're referring to as like those, um, you know, those local like mom and pop shops, yeah. like those types of, of organizations. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you're working with them, it's like you've any, any money is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so right sizing that approach is, I mean, it's, it's huge. It's not wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Let's, um, let's, let's look through here. What else do we got? Um, okay. So we've, um, switch back here. Um, so we worked through some of the early challenges, um, which were a lot more like mental, it seems, which is still a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, how about now? So you're, you're three years in, uh, actually, yeah, it is May, um, or getting to that three year point. So you're three years in, 
what are you dealing with now? Uh, what are what are those pain points now that you're kind of working through or um, or trying to work through or have recently realized that like, hey, these are problems like I'm, you know, whatever that is. Is it employees? Are you trying to grow or what? What are you dealing with? So I mentioned earlier processes and that's clear like that's my biggest pain point right now is getting these processes developed um, mostly because. I need to be in a position where my business can run without me. And you know, I've, I've been, for anyone who has read The E-Myth Revisited uh, by Michael Gerber, hashtag not sponsored, <laughs> the, uh, you know, he talks about you know, setting, setting your business up to you know, be sold. I actually do not wish to sell my business. I mean, if somebody offers me a boatload of money, sure, why not? But my my exit strategy is, you know, producing something that I can hand off to my daughters one day, uh, if they want it. Um, you know, so I'm not going to be like, you. I built this for you. You must take it. No, if they, yeah. if, they, if, they, if they want to, it doesn't matter if they want to be a Dollar General clerk or a Fortune 500 CEO. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, like it's just, it's here. You want a marketing company? Well, as a matter of fact, I know somebody. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, that, that, so that's my exit strategy. Uh, but, you know, getting the processes together so that I can bring somebody in, start hiring people. You know, as of right now, like I'm an army of one. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have some interns helping me out. Uh, you know, my wife has been able to help me on the side every once in a while. Um, but it's, it's to the point now where I need to get these processes in in place so that I can grow. I can bring somebody in. It can still have the Scuba, co- uh, scuba Creative seal of approval on it, the quality, and ship ship it out. So, um, okay. What? How are you working through that? Okay, so you're trying to get these processes. How are you doing that? Like, what are what is your process for going about this? How are you documenting all those? Um, has there been any resources that have helped you with that or like how, wh- how, what's your approach to it? So definitely that the book is a huge resource, but, uh, my, my process right now is, um, uh, I just open up illustrator and I make a giant mind map. Okay. Um, okay. So it's a mess right now, but like right now it's got your, your end, your end game, uh, org chart. So you got like this, the CEO, you got an ops manager. You got, so, you know, there's maybe like 25, 30 positions on this org chart and Mike Scobovius is listed as, you know, the person yeah. for each one of those. Um, so, and then hopefully eventually, you know, start filling in and filling in names. Uh, okay. So you've got, okay. So you're kind of building this out. You've got a giant mind map of you at the top or you you everywhere everywhere you everywhere all of the things that need filled and then what is each of the like are you what's the best way to um to talk about that like how are you are you breaking everything like how are you breaking everything down so what i'm developing right now in this mind map is what is universal like you're going to do client onboarding every time you're going to do a sales process every time so think of like a linear chart where these that are going to happen every time are 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 put in there but then you get a branding job so you take that process slide it in and that completes the chain okay um like i said don't know if it works or not but it's still being tested but for now it works yeah um so, cause like I said, you're going to have, you're going to have the same method for like, there, there are going to be components to each process that are going to be the same. So yeah. identifying those and then sliding in what the variables I think would be a good way to kind of illustrate okay. the process. And you're doing that for all, of, well, you've all 13, yeah, all of your service lines. <laughs> um, that's, that's fun. That's, but, the, that's the biggest challenge. Like, that's a challenge actually. Yeah. What well, have you been able to has your intern been able to help you with any of that or have like, so I, I know the story behind how you got the intern um, or how that <laughs> happened, but um, which it was super, yeah, super last minute, like an internship fell through, you end up with the opportunity to now have an intern. Yep. Um, 
has that been, well, one, has she been able to help you with any of that? And second part of that, what has that been like? So going from nobody underneath you to now being kind of responsible for at least an intern, um, what's that kind of growing been like? So to, to the first point, you know, Rebecca is my intern. She's a rock star. She, she crushed everything that I handed her away and even like trial by fire. Like there was times where it's like, Hey, I need you to write this. She, she's a PR comms major. Um, so, you know, can you please here, here's, here's some specs. Here's, you know, what I need a word count. And she just knocked it out of the park. Um, so to the second point of having somebody under me, um, I, I like to think of it as a redemption arc, um, because at my previous employer, um, I was responsible for two individuals and look, you know, hindsight's always 2020. Was that the first time that you had actually been responsible it was, for yes. anybody? Okay. Okay. And I was a absolute horrid leader. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. Absolute, I mean, there's, de- there's definitely, and I use leader as the keyword because that's what I strive to be more so than a boss. Did you know it at the time or? No. Okay. So this is looking back. I was like, Oh wow. Yeah. I, this, I was not good at this. This is after, this is after going, the, going through the Gary V car wash. Like, <laughs> okay. Okay. It's like, Oh, this is my perception. You do this, you do this. And you know, but you no, know, it's like, you no, know, you got to change the mindset. You got to be a leader, not, not a boss. Um, but I was ab- absolutely wretched. And, and actually like there's one, one, one of the two individuals I, I actually need to catch up with and cause and apologize to because I, I did meet one of them at, at a uh, at a golf club because they were scouting out a um, the venue for an event and I happened to see her. I was like, "Look, I'm really sorry. Like, you know, two, this was probably like two years removed at this point. It's like I'm really sorry. I was an absolute horrid leader. Like, <laughs> I, I identify that now. I apologize to you and." You know, to this day, like, you know, it's, it, it didn't damage the relationship. Okay. So that actually, if you don't mind, yeah. um, because those are like, that's an important piece. Why were you a bad, like, not why, like background reasoning, what were you doing that you've noticed that it was like, oh, I was not doing well. What was there anything in particular? Obviously some things stick out like that you notice it now what, what were, what were those things that you've, that you noticed that you've changed, um, that have made you better working with Rebecca? So definitely, uh, forcing learning is one of the things that I'll, I'll put in. Uh, okay. Cause I thought I was, you know, doing a big, a big brain move. And it's like, Hey, let's have like Skillshare playing in the background. Like while we're, you know, working, it's like, yeah, no, it just, that did not work. Um, and as it, to in stark contrast, like with Rebecca, I we talked about networking, and uh, I was gearing her up for a networking event that she was going to be representing Scuba Creative, and I started off by saying, "It's like, hey, like, you know, so what do you know about networking?" Like, and she went through like a, a few things, and I took what she she said, processed it, and like, okay, well, you know, these are you know all good points. Let but. Um, not a but. There is no but. The um, here's what I can contribute. Like let's add. Let, let, let's build upon that foundation yeah. that you already have. Yeah. As opposed to scrap everything you know. This yeah. is the way you're going to do it. Yeah. This is what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. No, it's more of like, all right, we're going to build up. Like here's a couple of keywords to pick up. Have some body language. Here's how to end a conversation gracefully. Like you know things like that. that they don't typically. T- Teacher. It's not, yeah. I mean, those, that's like real world things that, um, you kind of either just learn or you have to have somebody else that is, has done it, which those things are, I mean, that's missing like that. Is, maybe not everywhere, but at least where I've gone, like mm-hmm. it's a piece that it's tough. It, it maybe not missing. It's just a tough piece to actually show in a classroom. Like you've got to, that's, that's a tough thing to teach. Um, and it's becoming way more important now. Um, there's definitely an art to it. And I don't believe that in I, a couple of independent studies, but there, there really isn't a, a playbook or a class or is there's not, there's, there's advice and that's basically all you got, but there isn't like, 
there really isn't somebody out there saying, you know, here's probably a good way to network, you know, mm-hmm. a, a focus on networking. Yeah. Well, I think part of that too, there's a lot of every, I mean, there, there's definitely going to be like similarities for each person, but each person is so different. Like your personality is way different than mine. Mm-hmm. So it's going to take the way that I go about those things is going to be different. Now there's some things that are going to like, they can follow through um, from person to person, but there are a lot of like, <laughs> there's a lot of things that are going to be unique to you versus versus me or Rebecca or, you know, anybody. Right. When I, when I started out, like I was your, your typical introvert, I would, you know, I would hope that somebody shows up so that I can kind of like tag along yeah, yeah. with them in the room. You've but, been that person for me. You've kind of helped me with that. <laughs> so uh, Greg, I'm, I'm glad I could be helpful. The, but I actually met with somebody or she's, a, she's actually a client of mine. Um, and I really contribute my networking skills to her. Her name is Sharon Oliver, uh, Network Smart. And she really, without without giving away too much, because you really should have a conversation with her one-on-one, but um, she was able to pick out a couple key attributes that um, you know people usually say through like their body language, through the verbal. And when you pick up on those different identifiers, you understand how to more efficiently communicate with that person. To have a more direct. So if you get somebody who's like really brash and just like it's like, hey, I'm like, let's talk later. Bye. Like, or if you have somebody who's more like, oh well, this is nice. And so you can like kind of empathize with them. You you kind yeah. of know how to like drive the conversation that way. I have found like that really helps in the whole like breaking down like the network or the introvert part of my hmm. former self. <laughs> okay. Huh. Okay. So that is, um, yeah, I mean, huh. Okay. So that's one, that's an area that you've, um, definitely gotten better with, um, in, in this like learning to lead, we'll call it. Um, are there any other things that you, you were particularly bad at, um, that you've at least been able to, for now, um, adjust with Rebecca. And if nothing else sticks out, like that's a, that's a big one. Like just that teaching element, like that is, that's a pretty big yeah, piece of it. Yeah, definitely the teaching element. And, uh, nothing else seems to come to mind at, at the moment. Okay. I'm sure there's more, but that's, you know, that's opening the doors of a, a demon filled closet. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So, so that is, um, so you've become a better leader. Was there were there any now that you're the um, now that you own the company? Was there any now? Oh, it's an intern. So there's the um, there's not quite the same responsibility mm-hmm. of an employee. But was there any anything else that sticks out like that you learned from this, or that was, um, or that was particularly difficult about having somebody underneath you? in, in an organization that is yours now? So definitely being empathetic, the the emotional intelligence that, that comes with it is, you know, you actually have pointed this out to her, sent me an article once where when you have employees, they become your, your family. Um, so, and that, that rings true and everyone has a story. Everyone has their own set, set of circumstances and it's learning about, or it's learning to navigate them. People's cars are going to break down. People are going to be sick. You, you, you know, somebody's family member is going to, you know, pass away. Whatever, whatever the situation is, it's like in a professional and mature manner, adjusting to it. Yeah, yeah. And actually, that's um, I uh, Jeff who the space. This is his space. That thanks, we're, Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, Jeff Hancher, if you need any sales and leadership. Um, any of that kind of training, he is fantastic. But um, we actually just recorded an episode for his show. Um, I think it just went live like, well, I don't know when this episode's going to come out, but it's the friendly, not friends. But it's that like, it kind of goes back to that same kind of what you're touching on, which is being, um, not getting too close, 
but but having that empathy, being friendly, um, without being super super uh, super close and being friends, where it starts right. to cloud your judgment and yeah. and things start to become a little bit weird. But um, but yeah, I mean that's t- that's difficult. Like that's a tough thing to learn. But actually, that was a that was a really good episode. I'll link that. Not um, to get into specifics, but I'm kind of dealing with that now, where I have a friend uh, who was a client who has become a friend, mm-hmm. and it's not direct like it's not involved with me directly but there's a dif- disagreement between party a and party b and you know my friend is coming to me meanwhile i still have a professional relationship with party a yeah so that's actually um that's an interesting thing to to talk about actually so yeah <laughs> well so there it, it's something that i think comes up when you're working so if you're a small business owner and you're working with other small businesses, I think that's very easy to have happen because the relationships from, in my experience, and I think you can probably say the same, the relationships are a lot closer because like you're interact. I remember I was actually at, um, I was at a client's place with a friend, um, and they, the owner came over and like, I was sitting there eating and the client came over and like, just started venting to me. My friend, after she left was like, does this just happen? I was like, yeah, that's like part of, you know, where the, you're building a relationship with your client. Like it's, it's not just a, at least in my experience, a lot of my clients, it's like, no, there's like an actual relationship here. So keeping a, a, like, keeping a barrier there, but also being friendly with like there, there, that is an important piece that I think you deal with a lot more with the small businesses than you do when you're dealing, when you're starting to deal with those larger corporations. Right. No, I, I completely agree. And, and like I said, it's, it's knowing, yes, I'll be your sounding board. I'll be your dumping mm-hmm. ground. That's, that's fine. Same time though. Like I still have a professional relationship yeah. with party A and you know, I still have to do everything I can to maintain that. Yeah. Um, and you know, like I said, that, that, that is a, that is a drama being played out yeah. in the present. Yeah. That stuff's all, it's tough. Um, but it is, I mean, that's, that's something that is, you almost, I don't know if this is the right way to do it. We almost have to set like guidelines or guardrails at the beginning where it's like, okay, here's the boundaries. Um, if my wife was here, she would tell you that that is my biggest weakness, setting, <laughs> setting boundaries. Yeah, well, that's, I mean. I, I can actually hear her screaming that at me from, 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 from the house. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, all right, let's, uh, is there any anything else that you think um, sticks out or or that, we, that we've missed? Um... So if we're we're thinking generally, um, getting your books right from the get go, and that's a completely different topic. Probably some, you can probably get somebody more qualified than I to speak about it, but, uh, one of the pieces of advice I was given on very early on was getting your chart of accounts set up, getting like QuickBooks and it's been a lifesaver. And so, yeah. That's so, so if, if you, you know, the, t, the, the TLDR of this entire podcast is build your network, get your books right. <laughs> okay. That's good. That'll be the title. <laughs> build your network, get the books right. Um, so on that topic, okay. what is your, do you have a, so you said get your QuickBooks set up. Is that your system? Like what do yes. you use for all of that? Do so, you yeah, use? So I, I do all my invoicing, bookkeeping, um, you know, payments through like accepting credit cards and all that stuff. I'm sure that I can probably find a better method, but it's just, it was an easy all in one. It's, it's, you got it. Let's use it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, uh, but getting like the chart of accounts and for those of you who don't know, it's like listing like every single item, like if your service base, it's all of your services or, you know, add ons to uh, a service line, or if you're like in the production side of it, it's getting it all the way down to like nuts and bolts and stuff. So, and having like, and, on chart of accounts, like I think yeah. of every piece. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, okay. Well, um, any, anything else, uh, any, I guess any other last points and if not, then, uh, what's your website? Where can we find you on the interwebs? 
Um, All right. So uh, no, I, I can't think of anything. Uh, but um, so the I actually have one last thing. Okay. Um, conductor of creativity. Oh, okay. Where did that come from? So it actually has three meanings. Okay. Um, so a conductor, as in like a wire going from like or or the central nervous system, like going from the brain to your fingertip. Okay. Um, so that's that's meaning number one. Number two is a train conductor, making sure everything runs on schedule. Uh, so like if I'm doing uh, like print brokering or ordering stuff for, for a client, making sure it's all delivered in a timely manner. And the third is a, or a conductor of the orchestra. So somebody who leads the entire uh, band, the orchestra to produce something beautiful. Okay, all right. Um... That's, that's good. That's, that's good. Um, okay. Uh, now, uh, where can all of the humans of the world find you? Uh, Instagrams, all, all of the things where. Right. So most of my tags are at Scuba Creative. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn is usually for like when I'm out and posting about when, where and where I'm net, where and when I'm networking. Uh, the Instagram is all the pretty stuff, like examples of my work. Facebook is just kind of like a hodgepodge of everything. Um, and then my horribly, horribly updated, uh, unupdated website um, that's been in disarray is scubocreative.com. Okay. Um, I will have all of those links down in uh, the descriptions and the summaries and all of the things. Um, all the things. All of, all of the places that you'll be able to find it. Um, so I guess that's it. That's the first episode of the currently as of May 3rd, uh, unnamed. But when this is released, it will have a name. Um, I am Bradley Martin. Thanks for listening. Um, and uh, that's it. See you next time. Thanks for listening, watching, wherever you're consuming this. I'm your host, Bradley Martin, and this is Clearing the Way, a resource for small business owners.